What is going on guys, Lon here from Android Authority, and when Xiaomi held their press event in February, they announced a new online store as their entry into the US market, but this online store consists purely of just accessories, at least for right now. That however didn't stop them from handing out their 2015 flagship to members of the press. Is this Xiaomi's way of proving that they have what it takes to enter an already crowded US market? Well that's what we're here to find out with the Xiaomi Mi Note. As the Note name and 5.7 inch screen may suggest, this will be a device that many, whether you like the name or not, will put squarely in the phablet category. With the design of the Mi Note, Xiaomi really hit it out of the ballpark here as it is quite gorgeous looking. 2.5D glass can be found on the front giving you that subtle curve along the edges and on the back is what Xiaomi likes to call 3D glass that provides for a much more pronounced curve on the sides. All this is held together by an all metal frame with chamfered edges and in the hand the Mi Note feels solid. The metal and glass construction gives off a premium feel and it's very easy to hold onto because of those chamfered edges. One handed usability is surprisingly not as bad as you might think and a lot of that can be attributed to the device's thinness at only 7mm and its relatively small side bezels. There is a little bit of shuffling in the hand in order to reach every corner of the screen, but for the most part it's fairly comfortable to use in one hand all things considered. Now because the back is made of glass, it does tend to get a little bit smudgy and covered in fingerprints, uh, but on this white model that I have here, it's not really all that noticeable and you actually have to look pretty closely in order to see them, uh, but I'm not entirely too sure if I could say the same thing about the black version of this phone. Taking a tour around the device, the power and volume keys are comfortably placed on the right and they're very clicky, tactile, and easy to press. The SIM card slot, which takes both nano and micro, is located on the left side. The 3.5mm headset jack is up top, and the micro USB port along with the single speaker is mounted on the bottom. Capacitive menu home and back keys flank the bottom of the display and a multicolored LED notification light sits above the display along with the usual sensors, earpiece, and front facing camera. With the word note in its name, one would expect the display to be quite large and as mentioned earlier, it measures in at 5.7 inches with a resolution of 1080p. With a pixel density just shy of 400, it's a considerably sharp looking panel. Color saturation, viewing angles, brightness and outdoor visibility are all very good and the 5.7 inch screen size makes all types of media consumption like web browsing, watching YouTube, and playing games a very pleasurable experience. The color calibration of the display can also be adjusted in the settings allowing you to configure the level of contrast and warmth of the display, but the default settings already looked plenty good to my eyes that I never felt the need to make any adjustments. Features like glove mode are also available to increase touchscreen sensitivity and a reading mode that reduces glare and makes the screen a lot easier on the eyes. It's similar to how the Flux application works for Windows and Mac and you can even select which application will trigger this feature. The internal specs may seem a little bit dated at this point but they're still powerful enough to easily consider this device a flagship. The Mi Note is packing a Snapdragon 801 chip and a surprising 3GB of RAM which puts it on par with some flagships that are hitting the market this year at least in the RAM department. General performance like swiping, scrolling, opening up applications, and navigating through the UI has been quite good. Heavier tasks like gaming has also been solid and with 3GB of RAM multitasking is an absolute breeze. I will admit the device does tend to get a little warm after a short amount of time gaming, but I didn't notice any decrease in performance because of it. Another thing to note, no pun intended, is our review unit is a pre-production model running beta software, so app crashes and random freezes and things like that did happen every now and then. Uh, but for the most part, the Mi Note has been very snappy and responsive and all these software related bugs will most likely be ironed out in future software updates anyways. With the rest of the hardware, the usual slew of connectivity options can be found along with LTE connectivity, although US bands are not supported. 16 and 64 gigabyte storage options are available, but the Mi Note does not feature a micro SD card slot, so you're limited to purely internal storage, which probably won't be an issue if you get the 64 gigabyte model, but the 16 gigabyte model could be a little problematic for some. 
The bottom mounted speaker does sound good and gets fairly loud in volume, but being mounted on the bottom means you get sideways firing audio, and it's very easy to muffle with the palm of your hand when using the device in landscape. The camera on the back comes in at 13 megapixels and it also features optical image stabilization and a dual tone LED flash, which is not all too uncommon in smartphones nowadays. The camera UI is fairly simple to navigate and use with a large white shutter button and a decent amount of features, but it doesn't try to overwhelm you in any way. Swiping upwards or to the right will bring up several different modes like manual, panorama, refocus, and a few others. Swiping downwards or to the left will bring up a bunch of different live filters if you want to have a little more fun with your picture taking. The exposure can also be dialed in manually just by simply turning the digital ring on the screen, which I thought was a nice touch and it felt extremely intuitive. The refocus mode allows you to refocus a photo after the fact, which is nothing new at this point, but it does work pretty well as long as you follow the guidelines of having a clear subject of focus and a clear background. Overall image quality was actually pretty good. The shutter speed is fast and photos come out looking sharp with a great amount of color in both indoor and outdoor situations. The HDR mode also works really well on this camera, bringing back some detail while adding some extra warmth and color into the image. In low light, an increase in noise levels is to be expected, but the OIS and ISO limit of 3200 certainly helps the camera pull in as much detail as possible. While the images are usable, there is a pretty substantial decrease in sharpness and detail, but in most situations this camera has been a great performer. The battery in the Mi Note is a respectable size at 3000 mAh, but at this point in the game some might consider it to be just average. Regardless, during my testing, battery life has been very solid, with usage consisting of mostly texting, web browsing, and checking up on social media with some light gaming and YouTube watching thrown into the mix, I was averaging anywhere between a day to a day and a half with 5 plus hours of screen on time. On a heavier day where I gamed a lot and snapped a lot of photos with the camera, battery life did take a dip with the screen on time topping out at 4 hours, but considering my usage that was still more than enough to get through a full day. Standby time is also good with the Mi Note losing only 1-2% overnight, so all in all I've been extremely pleased with the battery life on this device. Battery saving profiles are also available in the settings that disable Wi-Fi, data, and other network functions to help you extend the battery life even further, and these profiles can also be set to come on automatically when battery life hits a specified percentage. In software, the Mi Note is currently on Android 4.4 KitKat with Xiaomi's MIUI on top. Like many other Chinese OEMs, the MIUI interface does away with the app drawer in favor of an all home screen experience, so folders are really your only way for any type of home screen organization. The icons are square and colorful and so are the preloaded wallpapers, but it's not gaudy or overbearing, it actually looks quite good on this display. There's a lot of Chinese applications pre-installed which will most likely not serve of any use if you live in the states, and Google Play isn't installed by default but it literally took no time at all for me to install it and get all the applications that I needed. The MIUI interface introduces some really nice features like hi-fi audio for improved audio quality when using headphones, and a pretty robust theme engine that lets you alter the look and feel of the OS from the icons, wallpapers, lock screen, and even the default applications. A one-handed mode is also available that can be activated by simply swiping from the home button outward in either direction to shrink the screen down from anywhere between 4.5 to 3.5 inches. While I personally am a fan of stock Android through and through, I have to admit the MIUI interface brings a lot of nice additions to the core Android experience. In China, the Xiaomi Mi Note is going for roughly 370 US dollars, but if you're in the US looking to import one, you're going to be paying more than $500 for one, at least according to sites like eBay. All in all, the Xiaomi Mi Note is one very solid device from hardware to software, and is one of the most enjoyable devices that I have had the pleasure of using from a Chinese OEM in quite some time, and that's why it's getting our Editor's Choice 2015 award. It's just a shame that this isn't coming to the states, but maybe this is Xiaomi's way of teasing us, and if it is, it's certainly one hell of a teaser.
As always, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up down below. We definitely appreciate that. And also subscribe to the channel, which is also down below if you haven't already. And check out the videos over here on the side if you want to see more. And don't forget to check out the website as well for more in-depth coverage. AndroidAuthority.com because we are your source for all things Android. Ha, ha, ha.